Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the wild world of dating and relationships with a bit of humor and a lot of real talk. Ever wonder why your dating life feels like a never-ending roller coaster? We're not in the streets, ladies. We are in the trenches. Why are people on dating apps when like they don't want to go on dates? Like I literally have sifted through so many conversations with men and I'm like, are we going are we going on a date? Like what are we doing? Why? I don't care how your date was. Greg, I really don't care. Like, my level of investment in this conversation was already low. And, like, if you don't make a plan in the next three messages, like, I will never speak to you again. One guy was just like, oh, I actually don't get home until 8 p.m. every day. So, like, the only way we're going to be able to hang out is if we have a sleepover. I'm like, you are a carpenter. Like, surely you've got one night. Like, if you can't be bothered to take me on a date then I'm not going for a sleepover at your house. So let me get this straight. You're swiping through dudes like you're at a buffet. And somehow, Greg's, how was your day? Chad isn't cutting it. Sis, we're all fighting the same battle. But some of us are actually using strategy. If your plan is for the man to pull a full itinerary out of thin air after three texts, you're going to be single longer than that carpenter's workday. Also, you're rejecting the sleepover. Must be nice having that level of confidence. Hey. Maybe try meeting in real life. Swipe fatigue got y'all tripping. You know what I just realized about relationships? A guy starts off by putting 100% in the beginning of a relationship. And over time, that will slowly go down from like 100 to 95 to 90 to 80 to 85. And then you notice, and you only notice, when it goes down to like 75 or 80%, and then you say something. And then when you say something, he puts back 5% effort. And you're content. And you're like, okay, he put in some effort. But it never goes back up to 100 or 90 or 95. It just goes from like that 75 to 80. And then it goes back down again to like 70. And then it goes down to 60. Long story short, it'll just go back down to 10%. When it started at 100, I'm not saying all men do this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as a woman, I feel like we invest more time and put in more effort as the relationship goes on because it becomes more and more serious. Moral of the story, if you're dating a guy and he starts off at 100% effort and you're noticing over time it's slowly going down, I just think that you deserve better. You're upset because a guy goes from giving 100% effort to, what, 75%? That's not called slacking off. That's called getting comfortable. You really expect him to keep up the same energy as the honeymoon phase forever? The only thing that stays at 100% that long is a phone charger, and even that drops faster than your patience. Men aren't about the constant validation game. Meanwhile, women ramp up effort? Sis, maybe you're just starting to notice the reality of maintenance mode. Not fairy tale mode. Relationships aren't a sprint. They're like Wi Fi. You don't notice how good it is until it disconnects. You know, when you're on a date and and they ask, like, what do you do for fun? And and I and I answer, ready? I I really like to like play music and I read books and I like to play video games and then the conversation stops. And I think I'm gonna stop telling men that I like to play video games because if if I hear one more time, are you a gamer girl? If I hear that, <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. So you're out here telling dudes you play video games and then wondering why they hit you with the gamer girl line. What did you expect? You say video games and half these guys are already imagining you in a headset yelling no scope while they try to figure out how to beat your high score on something. Newsflash, most guys aren't ready for a girl who can beat them in Mario Kart and still read more books than their Kindle. Maybe just lead with I read and save the gaming reveal for level 2. One thing that really frustrates me is when men tell women what women want and deny and reject women when they say, actually, this is what we want. And they're like, no, 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 it's not. Trust me, I know. And as someone that has studied counseling, behavioral science, the question I get asked the most from men is, what is it that women actually want? What are women actually attracted to? And when I ask them, what do you think women want? It's the same answer every time. Women want a man that is tall, stoic, attractive, rich, and a provider. And I'm always met with hesitation uh, or frustration, perhaps when I answer saying, this might be shocking, but not all women want the same thing, first of all. And secondly, yeah, you're right in the sense that some women, maybe most women, want a man that is a provider. 
They want a man that provides emotional intimacy, vulnerability, safety, comfort, loyalty, commitment, playfulness, and humor. Ah, so you're frustrated when men tell women what they want? Well, welcome to the club. Women have been doing that to men for centuries. But seriously, when a guy says women want a tall, rich, stoic dude, it's because that's what gets shoved in their face 24-7. It's like the cheat code for dating, easy to remember, works half the time. Sure, not all women want the same thing, but let's be real, asking a guy to be emotionally vulnerable, funny, and rich is like asking for a unicorn that also mows the lawn. We're simple creatures, just tell us what level we need to be to unlock emotional intimacy and we're good to go. Do you ever date a guy or your thing with a guy and then you guys end and then in a month or however long you guys ended, they pop out with a new girl and you're like, there is no way that I'm your type. And it's not even in the way where it's like, oh, like, I'm so hot and like, look at her. It's just like, what do you mean you see me and you're like, yeah, that's my type. And then you see her and you're like, oh, yeah, that's my type, too. Really? Make it make sense because like opposite ends, like, 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 op like, no way I'm your type. And so is she like you were lying. So you're confused because the guy who dated you turned around and dated someone totally different? Newsflash, men aren't out here with one strict type. We're not ordering from a menu where we pick the same meal every time. We see spicy one month and sweet the next. It's called variety, not lying. Just because we vibe with you doesn't mean we're locked into one style forever. We're like Netflix. Sometimes you're into action. Sometimes it's rom-coms. Honestly, if his new girl is the complete opposite of you, take it as a compliment. You were probably the peak of that category. The only man for me this year is a man who makes my life easier. That is it. That is absolutely it. If you are not immediately making my life easier. Sounds like you're not looking for a relationship. You're looking for a butler. Life's not Amazon Prime, where a guy just shows up and delivers convenience at your doorstep. Real talk. Though, if you're expecting a dude to immediately make your life easier. Maybe check if you're bringing anything to the table besides expectations. Relationships are a two-way street, not an express delivery service. You know, it's just so f***ed up that I have to go on these first dates just to meet the love of my life. <coughs> like, why can't you just appear at my front door and just be like, Hey, um, God actually sent me and I'm your soulmate. Let's get married. Why can't that happen? Welcome to the process. It's called dating not divine matchmaking. You're not gonna just stumble into Prince Charming at Starbucks and live happily ever after. You gotta sort through some frogs first. Think of it like job interviews. Nobody lands the dream job without sitting through. A few awkward interviews where you're pretending to be interested in company culture. Same with dates. Sometimes you gotta smile through it until you hit the jackpot. You know who I want to make a dating app? I want to make a dating app. It's all those people who collect all your information online. All the people collect all the information and they use it for advertisers. I want them to make a dating app. And then they, I don't even have to swipe. They're just like, we've put him in an Uber. He's on his way to your house right now. And you'll be like, no, 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 we've got to go on a first date. And they're like, no, we know that about you too, Miss Plan B. It's a really good idea. So you want the data collectors to make a dating app? Imagine the algorithm on that, no swiping, just a guy automatically showing up at your door in an Uber, because they already know everything about you. Privacy invasion meets speed dating. They'd probably be like, don't worry, we know you want dinner first, we've already made the reservation, and his last three texts were pre-approved by your therapist. Honestly, it sounds more efficient than most dating apps these days. Who is it? I've been searching for you. You're the love of my life. Please marry me. About time. You realize you've been fantasizing about someone who might not even know you exist yet. It's like you've been planning the wedding before the first date even happens. Slow down. Romeo. Life's not a Hallmark movie. You can't just skip to the happily ever after. Maybe try starting with, hey, how's your day? Before jumping to the altar. Trust me, it'll save you some awkward conversations. I'm a single woman in her 40s. I can date you or your daddy, so quit playing. Now that's a power move, but let's be real. If you're tossing out options like it's a buffet, don't be surprised if the only thing that shows up is a little side of drama. Age is just a number, but if you're aiming to date the whole family, maybe dial down the sass and focus on making sure your own dating game isn't stuck in senior discount mode. 
So I just read something that said that men who use daddy issues as like an insult to women are just admitting that systematically men fail as fathers and traumatize their daughters on such a large scale that there's an actual name for it. And I thought that was so interesting because honestly, I was gagged. I was gagged. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Why don't we talk about men with daddy issues instead? Your daddy never taught you emotions or vulnerability and now all your adult relationships are failing because you're emotionless and angry all the time. How about that? <laughs> so, the new hot take is that calling out daddy issues is just a way of admitting men fail as fathers? That's a wild claim. But let's not forget, calling out someone's emotional baggage isn't a deep dive into family drama. It's just a convenient way to dodge responsibility. And hey, if we're talking about men with daddy issues, remember, not all of us are stuck in a no-feelings zone. Some of us are just better at managing emotions than others without needing a family therapy session as a date night. Sometimes when I come home, I say, honey, I'm home, but it's just me. Maybe it's time to get a pet or a plant if you need to justify those dramatic entrances. But seriously, if you're talking to the walls, maybe you need a little more excitement in your life. Thanks for tuning in. If you've ever had a talking to the air moment, let us know in the comments. What's your go-to-line when you're solo? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more laughs and real talk.